Hi, boys and girls. It's good to talk to you one more time. We're back from our vacation now and uh, having a great time being with our church family. I saw some of you at church last Sabbath, and that was great. There are others who uh, don't even live near our church, and you're watching uh, this right now. And I'm so glad that you get to watch uh, these stories that I put out each week. And I hope that you have a great Sabbath. Now, before I uh, forget, I just want to tell you all, those of you who live close by and can come to Sabbath school and can come to church here at our church, that uh, you remember this game that I like to play with you. I, I call it the special word game, uh, where you count a word, uh, how many times I say a certain word during the, the uh, sermon. And if you... And if, if the number that you end up with at the end of the sermon is close within a certain number of, uh, of, of times that from, from the exact time, then you can choose a prize after the service. Well, we just started that last Sabbath, and we're going to do it again this Sabbath. We don't do it every week, but we're going to do it again this Sabbath. So you might want to come. I, I was able to get some new prizes and some things that we haven't had before, and uh, I think you'll enjoy that. Now, of course, we, we play this game together so that you can not only be a little more quiet during the service, but also so that maybe you'll be able to hear some things that I'm, I'm talking about and learn a little better, right? So I hope that you guys enjoy that, but it's going to happen this Sabbath. So please, I hope you'll come and, uh, and enjoy that together with me, okay? Now, I wanted to tell you a story that I just learned, so I'm a little bit, I'm not, I don't have all the facts together, but I just, I, I was anxious to tell you about this. You know how I've told you a couple of stories about uh, things that happened during the First World War or the Second World War? I think I've done that in the last few weeks. Well, this has nothing to do, this story has nothing to do with, uh, with the World War, except that it happened just before the First World War. It was way back in the early 1900s. You know, here we are in 2021, but this was like uh, 100 years ago or earlier than that even, a little more than 100 years ago. And uh, this is what happened. Just before uh, the, the First World War started or happened and or had an outbreak of, of wars, uh, there was a small ship and it was named the Endurance and you saw a picture of it uh, there on the front of this video. The Endurance, that was the name of this uh, small ship and it set out from Great Britain which is pretty much England way up higher on, on the other end of the, uh, the world and, uh, and this small ship set out set sail and it headed way down 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 toward the bottom of the earth you know what we call the top of the earth where all the ice is and everything we call that the arctic circle right well the bottom of the earth has a lot of ice on it too it's big 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 uh chunk of ice and we call that antarctica it's not Ar the Arctic, it's the Antarctic, and it's way down at the bottom of, of the planet Earth, way down there. And of course, it's got mountains, it's got seas, it's got you know water, but mostly it's just a bunch of ice. And that's, it's all by God's design, and he takes care of his whole Earth that way. And that's where he stores a lot of his ice, all right? So it's a big, 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 big piece of, of land, uh, bigger than our country even, and uh, it's called Antarctica. And there are certain uh, gulfs and bays and, uh, you know, parts of the uh, parts of this Antarctica that they have, uh, they've gone to before and they've put names on them, like when, when they, someone decided to name our town Wenatchee, you know, and, and if you go far away, you'll find uh, the city of... Uh, of uh, let's see what's in Seattle or Spokane they got their names because someone came through there right and they and uh, the town grew and they decided they would give a name to it and there are many little spots on islands and and bays and big pieces of, of uh, the Antarctic where people have gone you know explorers have gone there and named 
certain parts of them. And there is this one part of uh, the Antarctic called the Weddell Sea. <laughs> and it's kind of a funny name, Weddell, but it was named after a man who had, who had explored down there. And they, they, this big uh, section of water just on the upper part of, the, of Antarctica, uh, not far from South America, uh, it's called the Weddell Sea. And what these, this group of 28 men wanted to see if they could do was they wanted to sail all the way down to the Antarctic and go through the Weddell Sea to get there. And they wanted to sail their ship totally around all of Antarctica. <laughs> That's a big, big job, a big task, and nobody had ever done it before. They wanted to get down there and start at the Weddell Sea and sail all the way around the bottom of the earth and they would be the first ones to do it. So that's what they were going down there to do. They just wanted to be able to say they were the first ones to sail all the way around Antarctica. Well, they got down there, and when they got to the Weddell Sea, the, the, all of the uh, uh, weather changed, and it got very cold down there, obviously, because of all the ice. And there were storms and blizzards, and it got way down below zero. In fact, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, it, way below zero, which means it was more than freezing temperatures. And you know what happens to water, even in the ocean and in the sea, when it gets super, super cold, just like in your freezer at home, it turns to ice. And so they're sailing their ship, the Endurance, down through the Weddell Sea, and the water gets so cold it starts to turn to ice. And that picture that you saw at the front of this video was chunks of ice that had been the ocean or the, the Weddell Sea. All of that water, and it froze, and then it was moving around underneath, and it was crunching like ice cubes in your glass. They move around. If you move the water, they beat up against each other, and that's what happened. So all of this ice, you know, that, that got thicker and thicker and was moving around like this, the Endurance, the ship, wasn't able to sail through it. And they got ice bound. That's what, what we say when, some, when a ship can't move any further because of the ice that's around it. They were ice bound in the Weddell Sea. What would they do? Well, it wasn't getting any better. It got colder and colder. The ice got thicker and thicker, and the endurance was stuck right there in the middle of the Weddell Sea. Well, these 28 uh, men in this crew on the, on the endurance decided they were going to have to jump off of this ship because the ice was destroying this ship. And they got there. They had some uh, lifeboats. That's important to take on a on a you know a good sized boat or a ship needs to have lifeboats, right? And they had lifeboats. And so they these 28 men lowered the lifeboats off of the ship, and they they uh, got in the lifeboats, and they were able to kind of get through the ice a little bit, out all the way down to Antarctica. And they were able to get on, it wasn't dry land, it was covered with ice, but at least it wasn't the ocean, right? So they got away from the Weddell Sea up to Antarctica where the land was, which was still covered you know, with, with ice. And there they were, stuck on Antarctica. They didn't have the, the endurance anymore. They did have their lifeboats. What were they going to do and how would they ever get rescued? They were in the middle of nowhere at the bottom of the earth. Wow, they were trapped. Do you know how long they had to live there waiting to see if anyone would find them? A year. A whole year they had to live there. And they I don't know how they lived. I don't know how they ate. I don't know how they kept warm, but they found a way to keep themselves warm enough they probably found a way to, to fish, you know, and to get enough to eat somehow. And they lived there somehow for over a year. And uh, finally, after a year, they thought, we're never going to get rescued. If anyone's going to get us out of this mess, we're going to have to try ourselves. And so they made a 
a desperate decision. And the decision was to take one of the lifeboats, put only four of them, of the 28 men, they chose four of them, and they were gonna get in this one lifeboat and find some open water, and they were going to sail back up, up, up to an island that was called South Georgia Island. And it wasn't very close. It, in, in fact, it was 800 miles away, up back in the direction where they came from, and it was just off the coast of South America, off the eastern coast of South America, and you can even see it there today. And it's mostly ice covered, but there, there was a whaling station there that they knew about. What that meant was there, was there were people there, there were boats there, and if they could get this, this uh, lifeboat all the way up there, if they could sail 800 miles north out of the, the Weddell Sea and up to the South Georgia Island, maybe then they could find, get someone to help them come down and rescue all of the rest of them, right? That was their plan. And so the man in charge of these four that got in the lifeboat, his last name was uh, Worsley, Worsley. And uh, he was a really good uh, uh, sailor. He knew a lot about navigation. Navigation is finding your way on the ocean, you know, finding which direction to go and following certain tools that help you go there. And so they put whatever food they could in the boat and they had a few tools that they took with them. They took a map and they took a watch and they took a tool called a sextant, which watches the sun and it helps you to to see where you are, if you could read where the stars are moving, and, and then you stay on a certain course and make that your guide. And they also had a compass. So they had a map, a watch, a sextant, and a compass. And the compass was the most important uh, tool. You know what a compass does. You hold it in your hand, and, and uh, it has a little needle, and the needle always points to what direction is north. And that's where they wanted to go, was north, straight up uh, to uh, South, South Georgia Island. But if they were just a degree off this way or off that way, they could totally miss South Georgia Island. So you had to really be able to read that compass and really pay attention to it. But it was all that uh, Worsley needed, uh, that, that you would need if you used it well, okay? And so these four men in that boat went sailing north and the seas got rough and sometimes the waves of those seas went as tall as 10 story buildings, we're told. And they had to ride in this sailboat as they went way up and went over the waves, you know, and over these terrible seas that the water wasn't smooth at all, but they had to work at it and they kept going and kept going. They were hoping they could get there in just a few days. Well, it wasn't just a few days. You know, I could drive my car 800 miles, probably to the middle of California from here would be about 800 miles. And I could do that in about a day, day and a half. And, but they were on a little lifeboat, right? And so they tried to go and they were fighting the, uh, the rough seas and it took them two weeks to get to South Georgia Island. But they made it because Worsley knew how to use his, his compass and it kept them right on the right course and they successfully made it. And when they got there to this whaling station, they were, you know, the people uh, helped them out. They got them uh, warm and they, they fed them and then they were told about the other 24 men that were waiting way down on, the, on Antarctica in, uh, in the Weddell Sea and they sent a ship down there and they were able to rescue them. But guess what? Everyone was so proud of Worsley who read his compass and they said he was one of the best navigators that the world had ever known. And they said he was brilliant. But do you know what? 
all of his wisdom and all of his brilliance would have been worthless if he didn't know how to use his compass or if he ignored his compass, don't you think? Worsley was wise because he chose to use the compass that he'd been given and he used it to guide him to safety. Do you know that you and I have been given a compass for our lives? And a lot of us are ignoring our compass. We call it the Bible. The Bible has all kinds of guidance in it to tell us how to live our lives, how we can be the best be happy, how can we can be courteous, how we can succeed in our lives, and uh, how we can get along with others, and all kinds of things in our life that, that will, will give us a good life are found in the Bible. It's sort of like a compass, and if we pay attention to it and use it as our guide, it will get us not only to safety, salvation, and to heaven one day, but it will also help us to live the life that we, we are called to live, to have a good, happy life, a life that is uh, meaningful, and one that helps other people and is a blessing to other people. So remember, you've been given a compass, and it is your Bible. And so I hope you'll read it, read it all you can, and learn from it, okay? All right, well, that's our story for today. Again, I want to hope that uh, I want to encourage you to make it to Sabbath school. And uh, also, I hope to see you at church. Otherwise, I'll see you right here next week, all right? Special word this week. Remember, and I'm, I haven't decided what it is yet, but I'll tell you when you get here, all right? God bless you guys. I'll see you next time. Oh, oh, let's pray. Lord in heaven, thank you so much for this uh, lesson, this story that we've heard about Worsley and uh, the endurance and the uh, Weddell Sea. Thank you for giving us a compass, our Bibles, and we pray that you'll help us to pay close attention to them and learn from them and use them as a guide for our lives. We thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, you guys, see you next time. Bye-bye.